Another principle that I like to apply to the garden is catch and store energy. Plants do this naturally. Plants are catching and storing sun energy in, in the form of photosynthesis and sugars in their tissues. This, they just do this intrinsically. But how can we catch and store energy in our garden? I mainly like to catch and store water. So the gardens I design normally take into account water flow and sinking the water in wherever we can. And we do this in various ways. The way I set up a garden normally is I'll come in and I like to rototill once, the first time, because I feel like this makes it really easy to install the garden. So I'll throw down compost and fertilizer and manure, wet the area nicely, and then rototill the whole area. And then I shovel out the paths and raise the beds. This might be a little counterintuitive to some people who like to do the acekia gardening, which is down, it's a sunken bed. But in this soil type and in this climate, that can actually be problematic because during rain season, that will pool up and that'll basically be a pond. So it really makes it hard to garden in the winter with that kind of system in the really high clay soils and in a, in a temperate climate where we get all our rain in the winter. So I do the opposite. I shovel the paths out and raise the beds up. This actually gives the plant roots much more volume of soil and it's much looser. And then we fill in the pathways with mulch. Now these pathways effectively become water harvesting structures. They don't necessarily need to be perfectly on contour either. And there's a lot of people who say you got to do everything on contour. On the small scale I would differ. I'd say it's fine. You don't have to do it perfectly on contour on the small scale. You just need to deal with the water flow somewhere else downstream. You just need to know that if you're not doing it on contour, you're going to have to manage either soil erosion or water flow at another point in the landscape. Now that said, don't do your, <laughs> don't go completely off contour and have your beds running straight up and down the hill because you're going to have a lot of soil erosion. What I mean is it can have a little bit of slope. It doesn't need to be perfectly on contour. So here we designed the garden so the rows actually had north-south access. So the plants get really even sun exposure. So the sun passes in the morning, it rises in the east, sets in the west. These plants get really good exposure and the tall plants are not really shading the other plants. And we also put the tall plants in the back of the garden so they don't shade the front of the garden. So we store the water by mulching. We preserve it in the ground. We reduce the amount of evaporation by covering the soil at all times. Bare soil is public enemy number one. Not only because your soil is going to blow away, but because it's going to dehydrate. We need to keep the soil covered at all times. So you see here we've got wood chip mulch in the pathways, which is going to be really long lasting. I generally don't use wood chip mulch on the beds themselves because wood chips take nitrogen to break down. So they could potentially take nutrients away from your plants through the biological process of breakdown, which is natural, but it does take a long time for the wood chips to break down. So they're perfect for adding in the pathways because we don't want weeds coming up in the pathways, do we? The straw is perfect because it's more of a, it's more bacterial than fungal. When you get into the f soil food web, most vegetables we grow prefer a pretty balanced bacterial to fungal ratio. The straw is a perfect ratio. The straw has the perfect characteristics for that. So we use the spent straw as a mulch covering on the beds.